By the dawn of the 1980s, the original 737 was slowly becoming yesterday's technology. The aviation industry had been impacted by the 1973 oil crisis and noise complaints at various airports, which called for aircraft that were quieter and more fuel efficient. Eastern Airlines announced that it is grounding 16 airliners, furloughing 360 pilots and cutting service on its Northeast shuttle service because of the fuel shortage. A truly quiet jet engine remains only a theoretical possibility. Determined to keep pace with the market, Boeing worked on a modernized 737 to keep it up to date with the latest technology being offered at the time. And so, the second incarnation of the baby Boeing was born. Development of the second generation 737, dubbed the Classic Series, began in 1979. The primary focus of the project was to upgrade the avionics and engines to modern specifications, while retaining commonality with the original 737. General Electric's CFM-56 replaced the Pratt & Whitney JT-8D as the standard engine for all variants, which improved fuel efficiency, increased range, and generated less noise. Because of the original design's low ground clearance, the new engine had to be placed at the front of the wing, and engine accessories were contained on the sides of the engine pod, giving it a distinctly flattened bottom. Major redesigns were done on the base model to improve aerodynamics and increase capacity. These included a wingtip extension of 23 centimeters, a fuselage stretch of 2.87 meters, and a redesigned tail fin. Electronic flight displays, which were still new on airliners at the time, were introduced as a cockpit configuration option, which was the key to the 737's success for generations to come. All variants of the 737 Classic share commonality and specifications, with the most noticeable external difference being their lengths. The original variant, known as the 737-300, had the length of 33.4 meters, a maximum capacity of 149 passengers, and a range of 4,176 kilometers. The prototype was first flown on February 24, 1984. Launch customer US Air received its first aircraft on November 28 that same year. 1,113 737-300s were produced until 1999. The last aircraft was delivered to Air New Zealand on December 17, 1999, coincidentally on the 96th anniversary of the Wright brothers' first flight. The longest variant of this generation, the 737-400, was launched in 1985 with a 3-meter long stretch over the 737-300, giving it a length of 36.4 meters and a maximum capacity of 188 passengers at the expense of dropping its range down to 3,820 kilometers. It was designed with a strengthened wing spar and introduced a tail bumper to prevent tail strikes. The prototype made its first flight on February 19, 1988, and the variant was introduced into commercial service by Piedmont Airlines on September 15, 1988. 486 737 400s were built until production ceased in 2000 with the last aircraft being delivered to Czech Airlines on February 28 that year. Like the previous generation, the 737 Classics could be operated in a combi or mixed passenger freighter configuration on the main deck, and pure freighter conversions were also offered. In response to customer demand for a modernized replacement for the 737-200, the 737-500 was designed to be the smallest variant of this generation at 31 meters long making it shorter than the 737-300, but close to the length of the 737-200. Its range of 4,398 kilometers compensated for the reduced capacity, allowing it to fly the farthest distance out of all the classic variants. The prototype first flew on June 30, 1989. Launch customer Southwest received the first delivery on February 28, 1990. Because of its size, the 500 was the least popular variant of the classic generation, with only 389 sold by the time the last aircraft was delivered to Air Nippon on July 21, 1999. The 737 Classic was a big success over its predecessor, 
with 1,988 aircraft sold from 1984 to 2000. But the baby Boeing's evolution didn't just end here. Competition from fully digitalized counterparts like the Airbus A320 arose in the 1990s, which pushed Boeing to give its bestseller another upgrade. With its mix of analog and digital flight systems, the Classic series laid the foundation for the 737's third incarnation, appropriately named the Next Generation series, which completed the baby Boeing's transition to pure glass cockpits. From here, the 737 was ready for the 21st century, 